Hello viewers, welcome to our YouTube channel Sai Edu Pharma. As various subscribers have given in the in the comment section that they want fundamentals of controlled release drug delivery systems topic in English. So we are preparing this video and this will be beneficial for M Pharm students as well as B Pharm students. So what are the takeaways from this video? You will be getting to know about introduction, terminologies, definitions of various types of control release drug delivery systems then we will be seeing the comparison between conventional and controlled release delivery systems and what are the advantages and disadvantages of these systems then we will be comparing the term sustained and controlled release we will be also seeing which drugs are not suitable for preparing as controlled release dosage form then what is the therapeutic window with conventional dosage form then drug plasma levels after various dosing regimens then rationale or parameters to be considered for control release then what are the factors which are influencing the design and act of control release products and classification of control release systems so now we'll be starting what are the control release drug delivery systems if we see the definition then basically these systems are developed so that they can deliver drug in predetermined amount in predetermined rate to the body so here amount or extent is very important that how much or how much quantity of the drug will be released in which time duration that is important so it will ensure the safety and also it, it will improve the efficacy of the drug because the amount is controlled and the dosing frequency is reduced so the patient compliance is achieved and thereby you can see that the constant plasma drug level is also achieved by these systems now what was the need for developing control release system there were some drawbacks or some problems in conventional dosage forms so if we compare then in the case of release you will be seeing that when you take any conventional dosage form then the rapid release occurs and the complete quantity is released immediately but in case of controlled release systems slow release is there and the release is controlled or or you can say that we control the time duration of release what is the rate limiting step rate limiting step is the slowest step for conventional dosage form absorption is the slowest step and for absorption you all know that there is disintegration dissolution then absorption and in case of controlled release drug release from the dosage form is the rate limiting step and when we see the absorption then in conventional dosage form it is poor but in controlled release the absorption is controlled and the dosing frequency is high in conventional and in control it is less patient compliance is poor in conventional because the patient has to take many times the drug the frequency is high but in the case of control release patient compliance is more or high blood level fluctuates in the case of conventional level but in the case of control we manage such a way that the blood level is constant for a period of time as we design the system and bioavailability is poor in the case of conventional but in the case of control release it is better and what is bioavailability it is the amount and extent of reaching of drug in the systemic circulation and we all know very well that the the free drug that is available in the systemic circulation that is only uh, responsible for drug action then premature metabolism is frequent in the case of conventional dosage forms and it is protected in case of controlled release so when we see uh, in a broader way we classify as a modified release dosage form and extended release dosage form and in modified there comes delayed release dosage and targeted release and also there is one more term prolonged release but in the case of extended release you see the two terms sustained release and controlled release so what do, what are the definition actually these both are for the same uh, purpose but the sustained release are designed to release the medication slowly and continuously over an extended period of time this is important and it maintains the drug concentration with the therapeutic range for a prolonged duration here duration is extended but in the case of controlled release dosage form we design it to release the medication at a predetermined rate here rate is uh, managed 
with the help of various mechanisms and in response to specific physiological or environmental stimuli ensuring optimal drug concentration over an extended period now if we compare these two terms then if we see a mechanism that in the case of sustained release generally dispersed or embedded within a matrix or coating that controls its release this is the main mechanism and the release is uniform predictable and aims to maintain the therapeutic drug level drug levels over an extended duration but you see for controlled release we use various mechanisms to modulate the release like diffusion dissolution osmotic pressure changes in ph or temperature and these mechanisms allow for precise control over the release kinetics if we see release kinetics then in the case of sustained the release of the drug at a relatively constant rate over time aiming to provide a steady plasma concentration within a therapeutic range but when we see for control then they exhibit more complex release profiles with variation in release rate over time and here we can design uh, the release kinetics like pulsatile release zero order release targeted release these we can change by the uh, by preparing the control dosage forms and if we see the applications sustained in the case of sustained release the drugs with narrow therapeutic index can also be used but in this we generally use broader uh, use the drugs having broader therapeutic index only and they are used to optimize drug efficacy minimize side effects and improve patient compliance so if we see the advantages we can very well summarize as we have seen the comparison of conventional and controlled release so if we see from here it improves the patient compliance because the dosing frequency is reduced and now uh, dosing frequency is reduced similarly dose is also reduced so the side effects are reduced then increased drug stability because we avoid metabolism then increased drug efficacy because we are controlling the rate as well as amount then reduction in dose and dosing frequency and they improve the bioability of drug and eliminates fluctuation in plasma drug concentration these are important advantages but there are some of the disadvantages also the most important disadvantage is dose dumping what is dose dumping if we are designing a dosage form so for a particular time duration and due to some glitch or due to some failure the complete dose releases immediately then that is dose dumping so while designing control release this is the most important factor that you have to design in such a way that dose dumping is avoided then there is very difficult to maintain in vitro in vivo correlation if it is maintained properly then only the design of control releases uh, is made properly and because we are preparing in uh, this system by we are using various polymers and we are using various techniques so the cost of these systems is increased so high cost is another disadvantage then every person has its own uh, person to person body metabolic rates and parameters so patient variability effects are also another point and then it is difficult to optimize the accurate dose and dosing interval so we have to take care of these disadvantages while preparing control release systems now which are the category or which are the parameters to be considered or we can say that which drugs are not suitable for preparing for control release dosage forms so the drugs with narrow therapeutic index because if it has narrow therapeutic index means it is very potent and it is dangerous so these drugs we avoid for preparing for control release then if the drug has poor absorption if it has large dose then short or long elimination half life then low aqueous solubility and extensive first pass metabolism these category of drugs are not this is very important graph this is graph between plasma drug concentration and time you can see here therapeutic window with conventional dosage form when we take any drug then uh, this is a lag time after a particular time duration the drug is uh, the absorption is started 
so when the action starts that is onset of action the complete duration is duration of action then the maximum concentration is p effect or c max then this is the absorption curve and this is the elimination curve after particular time duration the drug starts excretion and so this is the elimination curve this is the desired response and this is the ad adverse response so this is minimum effective concentration and minimum safe concentration so the difference between mec and msc is therapeutic window and after adverse response comes side effect this is when we take conventional dosage form but this is the condition when we take uh, this we are comparing with uh, sustained release and controlled release so this was the curve for conventional and for sustained release drug in uh, the drug absorbs and then slowly the drug is eliminated so this curve is broader but in the case of control release the after this absorption level there is constant plasma concentration this is steady drug concentration and this is zero order control release now this is the curve if we if we take this as multiple dose of conventional dosage form so you can see here this is a absorption curve this is elimination then here we are giving second dose so these are the valleys and these are the peaks now what are the parameters to be considered for controlled delivery so biological or elimination half life as we have seen previously it should not be very low or very high so it should be between 2 to 6 hours and molecular weight also should not be very high it should be 150 for spherical molecules and 400 for chain like compounds then intrinsic absorption rate should be greater than release rate so this will avoid the accumulation of the drug in one place then solubility should be at least 0.1 to 1 percent in non-ionized form and absolute biology should be 75 percent or more then steady state concentration should be lower css and smaller volume of distribution then toxic concentration the therapeutic window should be broader that is that is drug should not be very potent and protein binding capacity should be low so what are the drug release mechanisms for controlled release basically dissolution diffusion osmosis erosion chemical reactions these are some of the mechanisms by which these products work now what are the factors that you have to take care while designing the controlled release product these are categorized into two categories physiological properties and biological factors in this aqueous solubility should be high partition coefficient should be high drug pka should be considered drug stability parameters have to be considered molecular size and molecular weight should be low protein binding should be low and in the case of biological factors you have to take care of all the factors affecting absorption then biological half-life should be moderate that is two to six hours and dose size should be optimum not very high therapeutic window absorption window and patient physiology all these factors you have to take care of now this this is classification of control release systems on the basis of release pattern so rate program drug delivery system site targeted drug delivery system feedback regulated and activated modulated these are the four types on the basis of drug release pattern and on the basis of routes of drug administration these are oral buccal transdermal parenteral pulmonary vaginal and intrauterine and colon control release now these are the examples of the types that we have seen like rate pre-programmed drug release system in this we can uh, we prepare three types like polymer membrane permeation control then polymer matrix diffusion control and micro reservoir partition control. and similarly there are activated modulated drug delivery system in this you can activate by physical process by chemical process or by biochemical process and in feedback regulated bio erosion bioresponsive and self-regulating and in the case of site targeting there can be first order second or third order or passive or active target now uh, how the control release drug release systems are effective or how they are applicable so they improve patient compliance by reducing dosing frequency they increase or enhance therapeutic efficacy by maintaining constant drug level and they minimize side effect by reducing peak plasma concentration now we will see some pharmaceutical applications of these systems in chronic conditions like diabetes hypertension cardiovascular diseases what they do is they ensure sustained therapeutic drug, drug level 
thereby reduce the need of frequent dosing and improve patient compliance. In the case of pain management, we can deliver analgesic medication over an extended period. So, it provides continuous pain relief and reduces the risk of dose related side effects. Then in the case of central nervous system disorders like epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, these systems maintain stable drug concentration and optimize the therapeutic efficacy. Then in, similar in the case of cancer therapy, then hormone replacement therapy, transdermal drug delivery, ophthalmic drug delivery, gastrointestinal disorders and VAC. So thank you so much. This was the video that we have prepared for fundamentals we will be preparing many more videos and these are some of the videos which we have already uploaded so go and watch our playlist of controlled release study system thanks stay connected with us